Hi everybody, it's Amy at Crafty Cat. So today we're gonna um, dye some papers like I mentioned to you guys already. We're gonna do some coffee dye and then I'm gonna do some mark making with some watered down um, black acrylic paint. So I have watered down black acrylic paint right here. It's nothing fancy, it's just acrylic and a little bit of water. It's not a ton of water. You can see it's still kind of thick, but not as thick as, um, you know, when it first comes out of the, the bottle. And then I just have like a fan brush, other kinds of fun things. This is just a sponge on a little stick, um, you know, for mark making. And you can use whatever you want. Just use things you have. Don't feel like you have to go buy stuff because you don't. Um, and then for the coffee dyeing part, I have a cup of coffee here with some um, instant tea in it. It just makes it a little bit darker. And then I have a little dropper here and I got these on Amazon. They're just little plastic kind of cheapy droppers. You might be able to get them like at Hobby Lobby or um, other places like that. I'm not totally sure, but wherever you can find some sort of something to make drips and drops. You might have them from an old medicine bottle or um, I don't know, whatever like that. And then I also have some coffee and a little spray bottle. This is an old like body spray um, bottle that I've put coffee and some rubbing alcohol. The reason for the rubbing alcohol is to keep this coffee from molding because I keep this one on my table here. So that's the only reason for the, the rubbing alcohol. There is no other reason. Um, I do have a stencil here that we'll use eventually, but that's going to be down the line. I had people asking questions um, in one of my Marguerite Miller collage challenges, how I did some of the backgrounds. And so I'm just going to kind of show you how I did those if you missed it on the, the videos. So anyways, I just take my dropper and I hold it up kind of high so I get those splats. And that's how I did the coffee drip fairy splats as well. If you watch that video where I, uh, my sister and I were playing with watercolor and coffee. Um, it was the same sort of thing. And then I just get into some of these spots and then come over, hold the little dripper down and oh, it didn't work very good because I waited too long. But see, then you can get a good splat kind of a look. just kind of makes it splat out really good. It's kind of fun too. <laughs> so how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing good. And this may be like way boring for some of you if you do a lot of coffee dyeing um, on your own and you're like, yeah, we already know how to do this. But um, I do have a lot of new people. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us. And um, or it may just be a reminder or maybe a different technique. For some people, I mean, I know coffee dyeing is nothing new, and there's a million different videos on it, but um, this is just what I do to get some of my backgrounds, and since I was asked, I would decided I would go ahead and, um, you know, do a video on it, so, plus it's kind of fun. Um, I'm going to get this dry. And then I'll come back and I'll show you a few other things that I do because obviously this isn't all since we have our spray bottle too. So I will be right back. Okay, so we're back and it's dry-ish. I mean, it's a tiny bit wet. If I was um, doing this on my own, I would let them dry completely, but I'm, I'm you know, trying to video here. <laughs> so anyways, now I have just a, a stencil, a mylar stencil, and you can use whatever stencil you have. And then I um, am using some walnut stain, Tim Holtz walnut stain, uh, ac acrylic, distress oxide is the, yeah. And so then um, I did this on uh, one of the pages that uh, a lady asked me about. So I just am, you know, taking my stain distress stain here, distress oxide. And since it's, I have a few wet spots still, it may kind of bleed out a little bit, but I, that's fine because I'm going to kind of make it do that anyways. So I'm not worried about that. And obviously this is not a technique that I would do if I'm doing loads of coffee dyed paper because clearly 
this is time consuming. This is just more for backgrounds or, um, you know, a project that you're working on or whatever that you might want a little more than just a plain all the way through coffee stain. So you use it as you like, obviously. But I wouldn't do this myself in a large batch just because it is so time consuming. I definitely love it, but it does take a minute or two. But if you're just doing, you know, some cool things and you just want a little piece that's different or something to use as collage fodder, uh, this is a great thing to do. Okay. For this one, I might, maybe I'll do something different on that one. Let me see. Just so we get some different ideas of what you could do. We'll do some numbers. And yes, my stencils, I don't clean them every time. As you can see, I have paint on both of these. But um, these are in my shop, these number stencils. This one is not, um, I know, I think Tim Holtz has something sort of like that. I just haven't um, gotten that one in my shop. <laughs> But anyway, so I have these numbers in my shop though, so this might be kind of fun. Add some numbers to this background. We'll do this large number one. And you could have it hang off a little and that's fine. But yeah, when I do regular coffee staining, I fill this uh, little plastic lid that's all stained. <laughs> I use it for paint and all kinds of stuff. But um, about halfway with coffee and tea. And then I put my pages in. I sort of do this. I dunk them down into it, bring them up, turn them over, dunk them down again. And then I'll just start stacking them all over until I have a fairly full, oopsie, I didn't finish that before I started jabbering, um, until I have a pretty full bin. Then I drain off the extra coffee and then I just let it dry. I live in a dry climate, so I don't have a problem with molding or anything like that. But if you lived in a wet climate, then you're probably going to want to, um, you know, either blow dry them, put them near a heater, um, you know, do them sort of one by one through the oven, although be careful because clearly that is a fire hazard. Uh, so, but I'm sure you all know that. So yeah, that's how I do large batches, but this is just, just for fun, fun stuff. I put this three almost hanging off over here. Um, I already did a five there. Maybe I'll we'll just do five this way instead. Have it hang off a little bit. I mean, chances are this piece of paper is going to get ripped up. Uh, used in collage or whatever, I because like, these little these are the little half sheets that um, come off of my Etsy order labels, so I just use them to use them up basically. So I would probably use it in collage or as a backing for a tag, something like that. And if you have one of those brushes, that would probably work better, like I have one, but I always forget to use it. I have a smaller one too somewhere, but we'll use this one, just because it's a little bit easier. But harder to get much detail or um, just one number at a time. <laughs> okay, that's good for now, because like I said, it'll probably get torn up. So then I would take 
um, my spray bottle once these are dry or you know not going to spread because if you do it while these ones are wet and you spray with this one it's just going to turn into a blob of spray and I'm just kind of doing a little bit because I just want that hint and maybe a little bit of bleed in the oxide but I don't want to turn it into a mud ball you know and you can do some of this if your little thing leaks like mine does <laughs> to get more of a okay so that should be good I'll get this edge just a little more all right so I'm gonna let those dry and then we'll check back with them when we're done all right so the next thing I'm going to do is the black use the black paint and do some mark making I'm probably gonna go ahead I normally do this in that bin too, but I want that to dry, so I'll just put two pages together. This is just acrylic paint, so if all else fails, it will wash off of my mat. Okay, and then this is also very similar um, concepts. So, like I said, this has been watered down, so it's thinner than regular acrylic paint. And I want, if I'm using one of these fan brushes and I have cut out some of the bristles in it, you can see like, I just snip some out there and snip some out there and they're not all even it's kind of all over the place but then you can get that sort of wispier look and then just make marks however you feel like they don't have to be anything specific you're just and obviously the more paint the darker and the lighter you touch it the lighter and yeah so it's just playing around really it's just fun and don't worry if you do it and you're like oh my gosh that looks awful or whatever because chances are once you add other stuff um it's going to be just fine especially if you're tearing it up in small pieces like this piece oh and this is that um newsprint paper for packaging is all this is so save your packaging you can buy it at Walmart if you don't ever get it in packaging and you want some so see this little sponge but use whatever little sponge you have a paintbrush of a different style will work um, a stencil brush just a piece of sponge cut off and you can see I'm getting differences already just doing it like this so it doesn't all have to be exactly the same it's just marks um, I even like to do like the bottom of my water which you can see here <laughs> is <laughs> has been I usually do ink for that but it works with this too so just grab things on your desk or you know wherever that you don't care if it gets a little paint on it and go to work making marks because it does make really fun uh, backgrounds you can tell right there that I'm used to doing this with ink because I went for the ink move to re-ink it right but I like the paint too because see you can get some big bigger blobs like that and I like that okay. I've got an extra piece of paper here I'm going to set this on So let's try a different paintbrush and see what we get. This one's kind of got a little slope to it, so I'm going to just use this sort of as my little palette over here. So you can just do that, do whatever. And there's no right or wrong. You're not doing it wrong if you do it different than I'm doing it. It's just fun. Or at least that's the way I think about it. <laughs> everybody's got a different style. Okay. 
And you don't have to fill your page up this much if you don't like it. My last ones I did not fill up this much, but I just think this is this is the mood I'm in, I guess. Uh, what else do we want to use? I have got a little kind of, this is just a piece of sponge. And your sponge might look different than mine, depending on the texture of the sponge and uh, what kind of sponge it is. This is one of those uh, cheap, like dollar store sponge brushes. They're on the wooden stick. I just cut one apart. That's all that is. Let's see what else we could even. These are just stamps. way, right? Because that way it looks more like a design element rather than a stamp. because <laughs> I don't want to lose my shape, you know. And then I've used this before, obviously. You can see that. Use my little brush again. I could even use that. It's just hard because it's on that stick. And I'm just pushing very lightly. And I don't have a ton of paint on here either because it's, you don't want it running under, unless you do want it running under. That's another look. It did run under a little, but that's fine. I'll go across this way. And parts of it are already drying, so. Yeah, this makes super fun collage fodder, I think. Put that out of the way for the moment. And then I did like just some lines, artwork. And even if it starts to fade out, it just kind of looks neat. You want them thinner or you know more wispy or whatever do some more with this oops this one that's the fan brush
And then I did I'll do another. bit of that just for some interest in these spots and then when I was all done on that last one I did some spattering but you don't have to if you like it just the way it is then just leave it that way you could do a different color spatters oh my gosh I'm getting paint everywhere I do that when I'm spattering but fan brushes work great for spattering. I can hear it like hitting stuff in my room. <laughs> Oops. But I just think that adds, you know, a little extra something to your mark making. Makes it a little bit more interesting. some bigger ones just so you can whoopsie that was a little carried away but that's okay this kind of thing is fun like for a Halloween journal too and if you don't like black do it in purple pink whatever color you want you don't have to do black I just I like to have that um, dark color sometimes when I'm doing other things so see this can dry now and we'll come back to it but so that's a fun thing. And then this one is pretty much dry. Yeah, that's pretty much dry. My coffee just rolled away. But um, so you can see that, that those bled a tiny bit. If you want them to bleed more, add more water. And then they would bleed more or more coffee or whatever. And you'll get that kind of oxidized effect. Like right here, I wouldn't mind. Oh, dropped my coffee this seven maybe have a little bit more so I'm gonna add a little more but if you like it the way it was then leave it like that but that's how I did that uh, background with those grids on it so and that's all and if you want to if you're like oh I'd like another darker drop on here somewhere add add another one and then it'll just give you that n next layer And so some spots where there's already coffee, it's going to get darker and other spots will be lighter. So yeah, so just some fun little ideas for playing in your coffee and your paint. So I hope this was helpful. If you have more questions or something else you want to see, um, always ask because I'm always willing to share whatever. I'm not, uh, uh, that doesn't upset me or anything so just let me know if there's something else that you want to see that maybe I didn't explain or um, whatever you know just let me know so anyways and then oops, this isn't all the way dry obviously but there's that one and then you just tear it up and it just adds neat little um, like I'll show you my little basket of junk. That one doesn't have that. Let's see if I can find one with the black paper on it. I know I've done a few lately with that. I think this one has some in the background. Yeah, there's some like over in this area over here. So I just tore it and added it. And this one's real grungy, but then I might do another one that's not as grungy. I think I added some to this. This was a little booklet I did using my trades digital download. Oh, that's something else entirely. I thought I added some of that paper in here. I think this was some, but then I added white gesso over the top of it, so it's kind of hard to tell. But yeah, like this, you can just use it for collage to add elements. Doesn't want to go in there right now. I think 
can't set it down. But yeah, they definitely add something to um, your papers. I just can't get those in there right now because I've <laughs> got stuff on my hands and I'm trying not to set it down in the paint. But anyway, you get the idea. Just add it to your collages. Um, and yeah, it is, it is a fun technique. So anyways, I will chat at you guys again tomorrow. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll talk again soon. Love you guys. Bye now.